solve this question, we need to remember the spirit of Oprah Winfrey, who famously said, challenges are gifts that force us to search for the new center of gravity. Don't fight them, just find a new way to stand. Let's embrace the challenge presented in this question, viewing them as opportunities to discover innovative solutions and approaches. You need to determine how submerged pencil will look in the glass of water. You are presented with three visual choices, choices A, B, and C, and then there's a the last choice D, neither. Do you think you know the answer? Well, just like a lot of things in life, this question may not be the easiest to solve. But I have full confidence that you have all the required skills and creativity to tackle it. And I know that you definitely will give it a try by pausing this video. Trust in your abilities and let's explore all possible options together. Let's tackle this problem as a team. Ready to show your answer? I truly hope your answer is correct. But remember that regardless of being correct or not, every attempt, regardless of the outcome, contributes to your personal growth and development. What's cool about this question is that it gives us the opportunity to refresh our knowledge in the concept called refraction. When you put pencil through the water surface, going from substance of air into the substance of water, the light rays passing through the water are reaching your eyes and they undergo the refraction. Transition from air to water causes the angle of incidence to decrease, leading to a change in the angle of refraction, which bends the pencil's appearance due to the differences in refractive indices of air and water. Refraction can cause the pencil to appear bent or broken at the water surface and to create optical illusions that affect our perception of objects. But what we know for sure is that it's definitely not going to look just like a regular pencil submerged. If you don't believe me, just try this easy to conduct experiment for yourself. Which means that the correct answer here is choice B. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. You would have to agree that solving this particular problem is like baking a cake. It requires the right ingredients, a bit of precision, and the end result is pretty sweet. I think that looking at each test question this way would be like looking at baking a piece of mosaic of your knowledge, contributing to the bigger picture of your abilities. In this question, you're presented with the set of gears, and you need to determine the direction of the last gear. Your choices for answers are choice A, CW, choice B, CCW, choice C, no movement, and last but not least, choice D, depends on X. Feeling challenged by this question? I totally understand. Remember though, that you are not navigating this path alone. Whether you're a problem-solving expert or a newcomer, I have full faith in your capabilities. Take a moment to gather your thoughts, tap into your imaginative side, and let's triumph over this challenge together. Your solution is almost ready and is definitely within reach. Are you ready with your solution? I hope you are. So let's move forward and compare our versions of the answer. Together, we will unravel the complexities of this assessment test question. I'll ask you for a favor though, and specifically to share your thought process in comments. Your insights might hold the key for all of us to learn and improve. To solve this question, we need to identify which gear is the input, which one is connected to the power source, and which one is the output gear, the final gear that performs the desired task. In the next step, we need to identify the direction of rotation for each gear. Gears can rotate clockwise, this is where abbreviation CW comes from, or counterclockwise, this is what CCW stands for. Let's solve this challenge by following the transfer of rotation from one gear to another. Our first input gear is rotating in clockwise direction. As you might be well aware, when rotation is transferred to another gear, it will be rotated in the opposite direction, which would be counterclockwise. Let's follow the directions for each gear. Input one is clockwise, then counterclockwise, clockwise again, counterclockwise again, clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise, and the output gear is rotating in clockwise direction. Let me show you alternative way how you can solve it faster. For example, if the number of gears in between input and output is odd, 
the last gear will rotate in the same direction as input gear. On the other hand, if the number of gears is even, the last gear will rotate in the opposite direction from the first gear. Let's look at the example. Let's look at the odd number of gears. The simplest odd number is 1. The rotations transferred from input clockwise to the next gear counterclockwise and then to the output which would be clockwise again. On the other hand, if there is an even number of gears in between input and output and the smallest even number is 2, you see how rotation converts from input clockwise to the opposite to input counterclockwise at the output gear. With this in mind, let's solve this challenge alternative way. Let's count number of gears in between input and output. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 gears. And since there are 7 gears in between input and output gears, which is odd number, the direction of output gear will be the same as the direction of the input gear. So the correct answer here is choice A, CW, clockwise. I think this question is not just about engineering, but also about your critical thinking and analytical skills. If you use the same bow to shoot arrows at angles of 45 degrees, 0 degrees, and 60 degrees, which angle will make the arrow travel the farthest? You have four possible choices. Choice A, 45 degrees. Choice B, 0 degrees. Choice C, 60 degrees. And last but not least, choice D, neither one. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. On my end, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the analysis and answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. Let's start by looking at the scenario where we shoot the arrow at zero degrees, which ultimately means horizontal shot. When you shoot it at zero degrees, it means you're firing it horizontally parallel to the ground. In this case, the arrow initial velocity is responsible for its horizontal distance because there is no vertical component in its motion. What's interesting here is that the arrow will cover some horizontal distance, but it won't travel very far because gravity starts acting on it immediately, pulling it downward. Now let's compare it to shooting an arrow at a 60 degree angle. This means we are launching it at a steeper angle upward compared with even 45 degree angle. What's interesting in this case is that while it still have a horizontal component, more of its initial velocity is directed upward. As a result, the arrow will reach a greater height but cover less horizontal distance before it hits the ground. Which brings us to the 45 degree angle solution. If you want to make sure your arrow reach farthest horizontal distance, you should shoot it at a 45 degree angle. 45 degree angle allows for the best balance between horizontal and vertical components of an arrow's motion, maximizing its range. So the correct answer here is choice B, 45 degrees. Did you get to the same answer? If not, please make sure to share your thoughts and rationale in comments so we can all learn. Here's an amazing question which tests your knowledge of objects, their properties, and the way they move from the top of the hill down to the ground. You're presented with three different objects and you need to determine which object will reach ground first when pushed to slide from the top of the hill. You have four possible choices to select from. Choice A, wheel. Choice B, wooden box. Choice C, sticky substance. And last but not least, choice D, they all reach the ground at the same time. Take a close look, maybe pause this video to see if you can come up with the answer. On my end, I have my selection, so I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. To determine the answer, let's look at each object individually. This will help us decide all the considerations related to the sliding from the top of the hill down to the ground. Let's start with the cube. Cube's shape may cause it to experience higher levels of friction against the slide, slowing its descent. But at the same time, sticky substance may move even slower. Because the behavior of sticky substance will largely depend on its viscosity and adhesive properties. If the substance is highly viscous and adheres strongly to the slide, it may experience significant resistance and it will take much longer for it to reach the ground. In some scenarios, depending upon viscosity, the sticky substance may never reach the ground at all. Based on this, I think most likely sticky substance 
will be the slowest in reaching down the bottom of the slide, followed by the cube, which would be second in the sliding down. So, as you might have guessed, I am putting my bets on the wheel. I think wheel's rolling motion will help reduce friction with the slide, allowing wheel to move more smoothly. This is why the wheel may reach the ground faster than all other objects. This is why I think the correct answer is choice A, wheel, because the wheel will roll and will have minimum friction to reach the ground. Did you come to the different conclusion? If yes, please make sure to post your answer, solution and rationale in comments so we can all learn. Here's a very interesting question where you need to demonstrate your knowledge of tools and their uses. Samir is about to tackle a tricky repair job. You need to identify the essential tool featured in the image and select the option that best matches it. You're presented with five choices. Choices A, B, C, D, E. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. On my end, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve this, as usual, please post in comments. I believe you probably recognize the tool shown. It is screwdriver. But this is only the first step. In the second step, we need to identify all other tools shown and determine their relationship with screwdriver. I think choice A is a knife. A knife is a cutting tool, and it is not closely related to a screwdriver. Choice B is a nail. A nail is a fastening tool, which is used to join materials, but it's also not directly related to the screwdriver. Choice D is a hammer. A hammer is a tool that used to drive nails or other fasteners, which is different from screwdriver's primary function. And choice E is a bolt, which is the type of fastener, like a screw, but it's not directly related to a screwdriver. So, as you might have guessed, the correct answer here is choice C, screw. In fact, screwdriver is specifically designed for turning screws. When using a screwdriver, you insert its tip into the head of a screw and turn it to tighten or loosen the screw. You can even guess it based on the names, screwdriver and screw. This relationship between the screwdriver and the screw makes choice C the most closely related tool or object to the screwdriver in the given options. Was your answer different? Or maybe you had other considerations? If you did, please make sure to post them in comments so we can all learn. Here's an amazing question to see how well you know the tools. You're presented with five tools and you need to match the tool with the task performed. Choice 1. Tool is used for making curved cuts in various materials. Choice 2. Is used to loosen or tighten plumbing pipes. Choice 3. Used to apply sparkle or correction putty. Choice 4. Is used to apply lubrication to gears and machinery. And last but not least, choice 5. Is used for cutting down trees, trimming branches and processing woods. And you need to match this description with choices A, B, C, D, and E. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. Are you ready? I think I'm ready on my end, so I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. Let's start with the choice one. I believe the description for choice one is a jigsaw. Jigsaw is a handheld power tool equipped with the reciprocating blade used for making intricate curved cuts in the materials such as wood, metal or plastic. And description 1 matches image B. I think choice 2 matches the pipe wrench. And the pipe wrench is a specialized hand tool used for gripping and turning plumbing pipes to tighten or loosen them during installation or repair. As you might have guessed, description 2 matches the image E. I think description 3 matches putty knife. And the putty knife is a flat, flexible tool, often with a metal blade used for applying and smoothing substances like spuckle, correction putty or paint on surfaces. And description 3 matches choice C. I think choice 4 is a grease gun. A grease gun is a handheld device designed for applying a lubricating grease to machinery, gears or bearings to reduce friction or maintain proper functioning. And last but not least, description fine resembles a chainsaw. Chainsaw is a portable mechanical saw with a rotating chain of sharp teeth, commonly used for felling trees, cutting branches 
and processing wood in forestry, construction or landscaping. You can see grease gun matching image A and chainsaw matching image D. Did you come up with any other conclusions or maybe have some other thoughts about this question? Please make sure to post your feedback and rationale in comments so we can all learn. This is one of the most exciting questions because it allows you to test your analytical skills and understanding of physics. You need to determine which fan throws more air if all the fans rotate at the same speed. The choices are fan A, fan B, fan C, and last but not least, choice D, neither fan. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. Are you ready? I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. As you might be well aware, there are two key factors to help determine the airflow rate. The first one is the size of the fan's blade. And the second one is rotational speed of the fan, which is measured in RPMs, which stands for revolution per minute. A fan with the larger blades can capture and move more air per revolution compared to the same fan design with the smaller blades. And this is exactly what we're dealing with here in this question. In addition, the rotational speed of the fan affects the airflow design. The higher RPM generally results in the higher airflow rate as the fan blades are able to move through the air at the faster rate. As you can see here, the fans A, B and C all have the same design. This is why, given the fact that three fans have the same design but different sizes, the fan with the largest size will throw more air compared to the smaller fans. This is why the correct answer here is choice C. Did you get to the same answer? If not, please share your answer and rationale in comments. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you for helping us to become one of the largest YouTube channels to help people become smarter, increase your IQ, and to pass any test. If the content of this video was helpful, please make sure to click the like button to help YouTube algorithm promote this video and help other people to find it faster. Giving us a like is also a way for you to tell us that you need more content like this, and when you tell us, we will deliver it for you in the future. For links to free and premium resources, please check the description and comments of this video. You can also go directly to our website, howtoanalyzedata.net, to download the materials related to this topic. I really appreciate your endorsement, support and patronage of this channel. And thank you for considering to become a member and considering to subscribe. Please leave feedback, suggestions or corrections in comments. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.